I am going to walk you through my steps of making sourdough. I am no expert by any means. I've only started doing this about two months ago. But my loaves turn out nice and they're very tasty. I've taken my starter out of the fridge. I just keep it in a wide mouth mason jar with a plastic bag over top. This is what it looks like after it's been in the fridge for a few days. It's starting to get a little bit um, wet on top, but the consistency is still nice and thick. This is still a very good, healthy starter. Some people like to take the top off of this and discard the starter or use it for something else. I am going to take a little bit out because the last time I made it, I actually made a little bit of extra. You don't need a ton of starter, so I probably have about an inch or so in my mason jar. So you can see there's still, there's some little bubbles in there from before. So this is straight out of the fridge and I'm going to feed this now. So I'm gonna reset my scale to zero and I'm going to put in approximately 70, 75 grams of flour and water. And this is going to be feeding my sourdough for the day, for this next loaf that I'm going to do. That's 70 and 70 grams of water, bring it up to 140-ish. And all you're going to do is mix this together. I just have a little bit of a longer spoon, it's easier to get right down into the corners. You want to mix it all very well, make sure you get into all the corners of your jar. You want this all to activate. I'll show you the consistency of that. Just make sure there's no dry clumps of flour in there. All right, so it's still fairly thick, but it's it's and it smells good. It smells like a nice, good sourdough. So this starter should still be very healthy and good to go. So I'm going to just cover this and leave it on my counter for probably three or four hours until it doubles in size. So it's kind of hard to see because my jar is a little bit dirty, but I will, I'm gonna just leave it on the counter so it's at room temperature. I'm just gonna cover it up with my little sandwich baggie and it's gonna sit here until I am ready for the next step. We're ready to mix our dough. My sourdough has been rising after it's been fed for a couple hours, so it's doubled in size. Uh, you can see there's all little air pockets in there. It's just a really nice, healthy starter. And I'm going to end up needing 125 grams. So I'm just going to weigh that out for a minute on my scale. And it's approximately, I usually find it's about two thirds of a cup. So depending on it, how much air is in there. And this is going to end up going back in the fridge when I'm done here. I've also pre-weighed my 500 grams of flour and 375 grams of water. So the flour is approximately three and a half cups and the water is one and, let's see, 12 ounces, just over, one and two thirds cup water. There's different steps you can use here. I've seen people where they mix only the first two ingredients first, let it sit for half an hour, I don't really find there's a whole lot of difference in the end product, so just to save a little bit of time, I do everything all at once. I'm also going to make it this sourdough in here right away. And don't forget your little bit of salt. I have a teaspoon of salt, which is, I believe, about 10 grams of salt. Of course, my hand is all sticky right now, but teaspoon of salt. It's a very sticky dough. It's very different than regular bread. But if you keep bringing it together, it, your hands will eventually get a little bit clean. It's very soft. You'll probably end up kneading this for a few minutes. I can probably stop the video and show you, but I'll just we'll just keep filming here a minute and see how it comes together. Sometimes I find if my hands get way too wet, I just add a little bit more water to my hands. The dough is all starting to come together. Make sure you get that flour from the bottom of the bowl as well. It's 
So I'm just going to mix this for a few minutes and then I will start the video again. So we'll still be in step two when I continue, but I'll just stop this for a minute and get this dough together and I'll show you what it looks like after you've kneaded it for a few minutes. I've been mixing for a minute or two. I do find if you dip your hand in water, it just, it comes together a bit nicer and it starts to come off your hands. You will see it's still a very sticky dough. Don't be tempted to add flour. Flour can make the dough too heavy. Just get your hands wet and use the, use the water to make it unsticky. So I've gotten it clean on the bottom of my bowl. There's no more flour down there. And it's still, I would call this still a ragged dough because it's not nice and smooth. And it's still very um, tacky, very wet. So now that I'm just, I'm just gonna lift and roll it around into the center. And now I'm gonna be waiting for my next step. So this is gonna sit for 30 minutes before I work on to step three, which is gonna be all my, my stretch and fold areas. So I'm going to now cover this. A little tip, if you buy these shower curtains at the dollar store, shower curtain caps, they cover up nice, they're a nice little plastic cap. If your kitchen is cold, Get a hot water bottle, put some hot water in there, put your bowl on top and cover with a tea towel. It just helps it with the proofing stages. I just find I've, when it's a bit cool in my kitchen, it just helps create a little bit of a cocoon, a little bit of a proofing oven. So we're going to let this sit for 30 minutes and then we're going to do the next step. It's been about 30 minutes. We're going to do our first stretch and fold. Apparently, I kept calling this a shower curtain, shower cap thingy, whatever. Anyways, it's just one of those shower cats. Juliana was laughing at me because I was calling it the wrong thing. All right, so at this stage, the dough is still ragged and wet. It's been proofing a little bit. I find it's best, but you don't want to add flour, so just have a bowl of water to dip your hands in, because otherwise your hands will really stick to the dough. And you want to stretch and fold four sides. So you want to get underneath your dough, Underneath, stretch and fold to the center. And you turn your bowl and you're gonna just do this on four sides, just like this. And you'll already see the dough looks much smoother. The gluten is starting to work. And that's all you're gonna do. Four ways like that, cover it. And you're gonna do this every 30 minutes, four times. So it'll probably take about two hours. Same step, and by the fourth step, you'll see it's much smoother. At the fourth step, I'll do a quick little, show you what the dough looks like. So, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, so you have it four times. And here, working on my fourth uh, stretch and fold. It's been a couple hours. The dough is getting softer and softer, and nice and elastic and smooth. Usually after this fourth one, what I like to do is I like to flip the whole dough over so that it just looks nice in the bowl. And now it's going to go for a four hour, four to five hour bulk rise. So once again, you can create your little cocoon with the hot water bottle if you would like to have a warmer place. It just helps it rise nice. Keep it covered up. Stay nice and warm. We'll see you again in four to five hours. In four hours, and my dough is doubled in size. Oh, sticking a bit to my shower cap. Um, it's still very sticky. So at this point, you can put some flour down on your counter. Uh, don't want to do too much because you don't want to really dry out your dough. You still want to keep it nice and wet. I had it rising on top of that hot water bottle, so I do have some really big air bubbles in here. You'll just want to pop a few of those. You don't want to overwork the dough though because you don't want to take all the air out of this nice fluffy dough. But if you do see some of the really big ones, feel free to pop them. This is a good time to do that, otherwise you'll get big air pockets in your bread at the end. So at this point, all we're doing to shape our loaf is basically our quarters again. We're bringing the bottom up to the top and we'll do one side, fold it over. Then we'll take the other side and fold that over. And then we're gonna take the fourth side, nice big bubble there. And we're gonna take this one and we're gonna fold it all the way around to the back. 
so that we, we so it's not sticking to the counter because we have a little bit of flour. You also want to use your bench scraper at this time and basically you're trying to turn, make this into a nice round dough, uh, ball. Also, if you see some of the big pockets, bub air pockets, take them out. The last time I did one of these, I didn't quite take enough of them out. If you don't heat it, if you don't uh, rise it on the hot water bottle, it, you probably won't get quite as many of those big air pockets. But because it was nice and warm, we have quite a few of them. Anyways, you just want to have a nice round dough, round ball. And at this point, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up proofing it in a basket, a fabric lined basket, unless if you have a banneton basket. We're going to proof it in here overnight. So if you take some rice flour, I've done it with regular flour, except for regular flour, I find will still, the cloth will stick to the dough when you try to take it out. Because the regular flour, the gluten wants to, it is still attracted to your dough, whereas the rice flour will not become gluten and it won't stick to the dough the same way. Still got a couple little air pockets. Anyways, you don't want to overwork it, keeping it simple. And we're just going to put it in our basket upside down. And tomorrow you'll see the reason we do that is because when we flip it back over to bake, then you got the nice smooth side around the bottom. So we're going to be putting this in the fridge overnight. If you want, you could leave it on the counter for an hour first just to let it proof a little bit more. Mine's looking pretty good. It's not deep, didn't deflate too much when I did that. So I'm going to be putting this in the fridge overnight. It is about quarter after 6 p.m. right now. So I am going to be, I get up around 7 usually, so at, in the morning, so that's 13 hours, I'll be shaping my loaf to bake it. See you tomorrow. It is day two of sourdough. I am preheating my oven, and I've got my Dutch oven, cast iron one, in the oven to preheat with the oven at 475 degrees. You need your pot or whatever you're going to be using to be really hot as well, just like your oven before you put your loaf in. A couple of different things you can try. You can create your own Dutch oven. If you have a couple of pots that go together, stainless steel, I've done this. However, my pots are starting to discolor from the heat of the oven. And I was also afraid that my handles would get bitter or brittle after a while. So I stopped using this one. You could also, I suppose, do it with a lid. You just basically need a place for the dough to rise in where it can create steam. Because of the high hydration ratio in the dough, the water in the bread will create steam inside your Dutch oven, which is what helps it rise and get that nice crunchy crust on the outside. So you can use stainless steel, but like I said, I was concerned that my handles and all that were going to get very brittle over time, so I stopped using that. Another thing you can try is if you have a pizza stone, which really holds the heat like a cast iron, trouble is you need to create some kind of a lid for it. So I've actually used before uh, just an Ikea stainless steel bowl, and that created a Dutch oven as well. This one here though, I find it's still the best one I've, when I've made my loaves, I've tried all different ways. The cast iron definitely creates the nicest Dutch oven because it gives you that nice heat inside and it gives that dough such a nice crunch. Anyways, preheat to 475. Give it about an hour because you really want that cast iron or your pot to be nice and hot before you put that loaf in the oven. Uh, we're gonna put the, our loaf in the oven. So my oven is preheated at 475. I've got my parchment paper out and I've got my loaf out of the fridge and you can see it's nicely risen. You want to flip this over onto your parchment paper and remove your cloth. And if you've used your rice flour, the cloth comes off nice. It doesn't stick to it. If you do have any excess flour, you can just brush it off. Sometimes you get a little bit of extra. And you want to score the top of your loaf and you can get creative and do different things. I do like my checkerboard pattern. You can use just a razor blade or a lamb, which is basically a razor blade. I like to do a crisscross pattern and a bit of a diamond shape. And then I'm going to get this in my oven. So I have my Dutch oven in here. 
until you pull it out and at this time if you like you can put it on a cookie sheet because I find the bottom of the loaf can get really dark if you don't put a barrier between the bottom of the pot because the Dutch ovens get really hot all right looking good now we're gonna put it in for another 25 minutes so it can get all nice and golden brown so I'm gonna lower my oven temperature to 450 and put it in for another 25 minutes all right, this beauty is out of the oven. And with, because I had a cookie sheet underneath, it didn't get super dark. This is perfect on the bottom. Now you're gonna have to do the hardest thing yet, and that is let this beauty cool for a few hours before you dig into it. But it's got a nice crunchy crust on it. it actually, I can't even bend it really right now because it's just so hot. But it's got, you'll also notice you've got some nice blistering along the outside. The color is beautiful. This thing smells amazing. It is just, oh, we can never wait to open these things up. So you'll have nice air pockets on the inside. This thing is just, oh, so good. Just, I can't wait to open this up. So hopefully you have some success on your own loaf. Uh, give it some try. My first four attempts were complete fails. It wasn't until my fifth attempt that it started to look like a decent loaf. So give it some time. It's so worth it. <laughs> 